Hi guys, we're the Brutus Spider team, and we've created a, sol a simple solution to a complex problem in barefoot parking. Let me show you what I mean. Manara, Beirut, the place where finding parking takes longer than homemade kusa. And this is Karen. Karen is an AUB student who spends 20 minutes a day driving in circles looking for parking. Until one day, Karen found Spotter. And with Spotter, she was able to connect with Christy and take her spot before anyone else had access to it. Karen is now happy. Spotter is not only about taking spots, it's also about giving spots. Whose spot will you take today? Spotter. <laughs> so let's talk about Karen. There are a lot of Karens at AUB. And uh, so Karens wake up in the morning, come to AUB, and begin driving in circles around the seaside road in hopes of finding a parking spot. And there isn't enough parking spots to accommodate, to accommodate all these people. So this problem is constantly talked about on social media. So, as we, so just two weeks ago, the second day university started, take a look at what this guy said. It takes 10 minutes from my house to AV and one hour around AV to find a parking spot. And Aubrey is paying $250 on a parking pass and still can't find anywhere to park. So we're engineers, we wanted numbers. So, so we ran a survey in the AUB community. We surveyed around 300 people, and we found out that 75% of AUB students uh, take more than 10 minutes every day to find a parking spot on the seaside road. So what do they do in, this, in these 10 minutes? They basically follow a simple strategy that we all know and hate, where they go around back and forth on the seaside road, hope, waiting and hoping for someone to leave. Even people who have classes at 10 a.m. or later are coming early in the morning to secure their spots. You know what this means, right? They're waking up early, they're going to university, they're spending two, three hours doing nothing just so they could park. So that gave us an idea. What if we could somehow connect the people that are looking to park and those that are leaving, emptying the spots? And this is where Spotter comes in. I'm gonna let Samir explain the rest of the app and how it works. Thank you. So, you open the app and you're presented with a map that shows your location as well as bubbles that show uh, parking spots that are about to become available. If you're the first user to click on one of these bubbles, you get the specific parking spot location as well as the contact and vehicle information of the guy providing the, the parking spot. The app also shows both the loca your location as well as the guy's location so that you could seamlessly, uh, so that the swapping experience will be seamless. So, you parked, you went to class, and a few hours later, you're ready to leave. Spotter will ask you if you're actually leaving based on your schedule, and later this will happen automatically based on, based on your, uh, your habits that are scanned through Spotter. You'll also tell Spotter how much time you're going to need to get to your car, so that you don't have to wait in the car under the sun until your match arrives. And now, uh, what about scaling? We decided to start Spotter here at AUB because it's going to be easy to, easy to publicize as well as to start the community. But AUB Seaside Road isn't the only place that's facing a similar problem. Any university campus, as well as office buildings and, and nightlife rows, face the same problem. So we decided to try and identify the specific locations, publicize Spotter, uh, publicize Spotter one by one until the community begins to grow organically. We will also soon integrate NFC, Bluetooth, and AI so that the app becomes seamless and hands-free. And finally, when, when Spotter starts, it's going to be subscription-based and it will be free and invite only for the first two months in order to get the work, the work going. And how does Spotter make money? Based on our survey, 75% of AV student drivers are willing to pay at least $5 a month for such a service. And of those 75%, 25 are willing to pay at least $15 for a service similar to Spotter. That data makes us confident that an app like this could, we, that we could provide a sustainable and scalable revenue model for such an app. And Spotter is already happening. We released an app at 2 a.m. today, and so far we've had 200 views on YouTube, 23 subscribers on our website, 
And actually, uh, this, has, this, this data was when we uploaded this PowerPoint. So until now, we've had 200 more views and 10 more subscribers and over 100 likes on Facebook. So if you're interested in the, in the future of parking, come say hi at ghostbody.com. Thank you. How do you guys control uh, selfish behavior so that you know people get spots but they don't offer out their spots? Okay, so the way we're thinking of doing that is that uh, if people are always using the app just to get spots without without uh, providing extra spots, then uh, we'll detect that through the app and then we we'll penalize them. For example, we could. Uh, this allows them from getting finding more spots until they provide more spots. And uh, how, how would you manage disappointment? Like people might come to uh, use the app and then not find spots. Well, they will try it once, twice, three times, and then they will drop off, and the community will not uh, grow as expected. How would you manage this? Okay, so basically, as a start, since we're talking AUB, uh, the app will be community driven. So we're marketing it as an exclusive, like, they have an advantage. We're not guaranteeing spots. But if they work together, they can actually create spots and create more spots as they go. So the, we're hoping that the teamwork inside EUB and uh, like drive to find a parking spot because it's so hard for us, like right now, it's a huge problem. This, this, we're hoping this creates more spots. And in the future, AI and all that, we, we could just you know, predict when the spot will free up. So charge five dollars for the app. So if you basically once per month uh, find a place, pay <coughs> itself because once in the parking is like five dollars per day. I, I know it's uh, the data will show it, but have you tried to do some theoretical math about okay the probability of a person being able to find a soon to be free spot? Because the other times of concentration, so the morning everybody wants to come in. In the afternoon, everybody wants to leave. Uh, typically, um, on weekends, there's nobody, and so on. So, have you thought about that? Because that is a fundamental principle. If there are crucial times, especially in the morning, where everybody is in a rush and you can't find a spot, um, does that will kill the value composition, the core value composition of the business? Okay, so we found a demographic on the AV website that says how fast are filled up by like the hour, so 8, 9, 10. And we took the times and we found out that 23% of students enrolled in UB have classes at 8 a.m. But we know that people that have classes at 12, at 12 p.m. or 11 a.m. come early in the morning too. Like they come at the same time as those that have class at 8 a.m. So with our app, these people won't have to come at 8 a.m. They will just come at their time. So this means more, more space for those at 8 a.m. And we know that like if I start at 8 a.m., I would probably have my class end at 11 a.m. at 11 a.m. unless I have class. So this would be like a fluid system that works itself out. And in the future, like, we could just use AI exactly to just see the citizens, even though it's not, not in our app, because like Google now can record when people park and get out of their car and it tells you where to park. So we might be able in the future to use this uh, data if it becomes public to predict that like if you're at home, hey at 11 a.m. you might find a spot, you could go try it. And there's no guarantees. Is there an incentive for the person who gives up their spot? Yeah. So as you said before, we, we don't give them uh, we don't give them uh, like points or anything like that or reward, or the reward. But if they don't provide their spots, if all they're using the app for is to just find spots without giving spots, then uh, the app will stop allowing them to find more spots until they get more spots. And can you extend this to um, like any waiting line? Uh, any, any, anywhere there's a line, like at the government office, you would have someone go and wait there, and then you would ask for the service, who's waiting there, I need their place, I need to go there now, or at a restaurant, or at a nightclub. That's actually a great idea, like, we, this could be implemented on the map, you just add some places, and you could go into that place and just see how, how long is your queue. This could work for other places, and that's, that's the great idea. But we didn't think about that idea. Now, to, to, to also 
to add to this answer. In AUB, it's like creating an exclusive community. So people will have the incentive to, to share their spots in order to like, create a network of spots. So they know they're paying for the service. Why would they mess it up? You gotta, you gotta give to receive in this particular app. Uh, 